Hi, it's Tim again. So, this is just a short video about aligning radios because I realize we did that alignment. I've done a couple of them on the radios that I'm aligning, or at least a portion of them. And some people might be asking, why do you align a radio? What are you talking about? Or they know, but they don't know. And a lot of my uh, viewers I know just watch the channel because I beg them to watch it and they may not follow electronics. Uh, so basically what I wanted to show you is, and I can remember from being a little kid seeing radios, they always talked about the intermediate frequency and you'll hear a lot of people say the intermediate frequency and that seems to be the first thing you set. So what I'll do is I'm going to zoom in here. This area right here, first IF, second IF, it just means that there's two different amplifiers, first and second. Better radio, more, more, more gadgets. They both pretty much do the same thing. One follows the other to make it to make the first one better. So we'll just take a look at here. So when you're adjusting the first IF, what happens is you're listening. If you notice, I put my speaker way or my meter way out here. where the uh, like where the headphone jack was I was way out there basically at the speaker so what you want to do is you actually want to put your intermediate frequency right about the middle of the radio is where this ends up being because you want all this other stuff and I'll explain that you want all this other stuff no matter what radio station or TV station or whatever you're listening to you want it to wind up to being on the intermediate frequency. So these two guys on this radio was 455 kilohertz and that's usually the standard. These two guys got set at 455 and basically what you're doing is with this tuned circuit these two capacitors here make this a tuned circuit on each one, the coil and the two capacitors. You're making it so that 455 kilohertz can get through these two that's where it resonates. That's like that's the good the good point. If you put 455, it'll go right through with no problem. If you put 555, because this doesn't this is no long, this is going to block it basically. It's going to say, whoa, it's going to be high resistance. We're not letting you through. We'll let the 455 through. So once you have your intermediate frequency set and you set these two capacitors on each one of these to your 455 as the first part of your alignment procedure. Now you know you're good. Everything with 455 kilocycles, kilohertz, can get through. Everything else gets blocked. So that's kind of like a nice filter thing. <clears throat> so, why 455? Well, all this stuff downstream, all this stuff down here, it's all set to work on 455 kilocycles. No matter what radio station or TV station, I don't care if you're listening to well, AM, the FM uses a different frequency, but the same idea. But it doesn't matter if you're listening to ham radio on, you know, 7.125 megahertz or whatever. By the time it gets here, it's going to be 455 kilocycles. The reason for that is it's easier to design your radio here to operate on one frequency than it is to have to do all the different frequencies. So upstream of this up here it gets con converted to 455 so all this stuff only has to worry about hey we're just gonna we're just gonna amplify and modulate 455 that's all we're gonna do we're not gonna do the 7.125 in the ham radio spectrum because somebody upstream is gonna take care of that for us <clears throat> so basically that's what you want to do so how does that happen well let's start at the very beginning right Right up here. Here's your antenna connection. Now, in the world around you, there's every single frequency you can imagine happening. Everything from the little kid on the walkie-talkie to the people on their cell phones to the fighter pilot in the airplane. It's all around you. It's happening all the time. And if you're within range of that, you can pick it up. Uh, so basically, you can imagine the airways are super busy super busy. So what you want is you have to discriminate what 
frequency you're actually looking for. The first line of discrimination there, or filtration if you will, the antenna. Where is it? My antenna right here. Antennas aren't necessarily the longer the better, or the bigger the better. An antenna is designed, it resonates at a certain frequency. Generally the lower, the closer you are to zero on the frequency, the longer the antenna is going to be. So if you're in the UHF, you're going to have a very short antenna. If you're in the, say the AM uh, radio band, you're going to have a very long antenna. So anyhow, your antenna that connects here, that's your first line of, of defense, basically, or whatever you want to say. Your antenna resonates at the frequency you're after. So let's just say, to make math easier for everybody, let's just say I want to listen to 1,000 hertz. Uh, or one kilohertz. There's a radio station on 1000, uh, an AM radio station, W Tim. <clears throat> so I'm on 1000. So generally, all car radio, uh, like in your car, all, all they use one antenna. They kind of got the middle of the band and they went with that. That's we'll leave it at that. We're not going to go into antennas right now. That's a whole different can of worms. Uh, <laughs> So anyhow, you have one antenna that's going to work pretty good for AM. So that kind of helps cut out the things that are not necessarily needed. The FM, the UHF, uh, the VHF. Uh, when I said FM, I mean I don't mean FM's UHF or VHF. I just meant your FM radio. It's at uh, 88, 108 to 88 megahertz. Anyhow, you're looking at the 1,000, 1 kilohertz range right here. So anyhow, you get into your antenna, that, that did your first line. The second thing here, right here, forget all these exist because this happens to be a four band radio. We're just gonna worry about one band right here because they're all gonna be, you do the same thing. But pretend this is just a regular AM radio, none of these things exist to simplify it. So the first thing you wanna do is, this already kinda of helped me tune in 1000 for, for K10. This will do the same thing. These two things, when my dial is pointed at 1,000 on my radio, I will set these so that when it's at 1,000, I'm picking up the best I can do to filter out and get 1,000. So then it goes through. This is, when, this is the second part of your alignment, doing these. So it's kind of the antenna alignment, and depending on how it goes, that could be a second or third step. But either way, it's after the IF. So once you, you've tuned this and your so signal comes in through here, then it goes into the RF amplifier. Still a wee little itsy bitsy tiny signal. Couldn't even hardly see it with, the, with an oscilloscope. It comes through here, it goes through that amplifier. When it comes through the amplifier out the other side, it kind of tunes it again. And it's saying, hey, we, we beefed it up a little bit. Let's check it again. So it tunes it again. <clears throat> Again, not all radios may necessarily have this. This radio does. It tunes it again. So, now it feeds it into a converter, and sometimes you'll hear a converter, mixer, uh, or a bunch of other words for it. This radio uses a principle called superheterodyne, and all that means is it combines frequencies to get another, another frequency. So what happens is in this converter right here, or a mixer, when you combine two frequencies, which is stuff came through here, K10 at 1000 hertz, one kilohertz. It's also combining down here, which is called the local oscillator. It's combining a frequency that this will be set to because it comes up here also, and this is where the magic has worked. When you have a uh, mixer, it comes out with four frequencies. The original input, the other original input, the sum of both, and the difference of both. We're looking at the sum or the difference. Basically, what we know is we put in K-TIM, and we're just going to say, theoretically, because I'm not sure exactly what, uh, what the frequency output of that is, but I know that we want 455 kilohertz when we're done. So, at the same time I'm tuning the uh, oscillator, the 
the big capacitors that you see, the big meats or the big uh, cheese, what do you call it, uh, potato slicer that they have. At the same time you're tuning that for your channel, you're also tuning it for this, the local oscillator. The local oscillator will always stay 500, or I mean, I'm sorry, 455 kilohertz above or below. That's what gives you that 455, because remember I said a, a mixer is the, the two input frequencies, the sum, and the difference. Well, we're not worried about the two input frequencies. We'll put them aside for now. So it's either the sum or the difference, whatever it takes. So if I have my 1000 K Tim coming through here and it's come up to this, what happens is my local oscillator is probably set, we're going to say at 1455. So the difference between 1000 and 1455 is 455. So basically, because of this filter, all the other things get blocked, except the 455. We've already set that, and that goes on through. So, uh, that being said, when you tune this, no matter what frequency you tune coming in from your antenna, it combines, let me make this a little bit smaller so we can talk about it without me having to do that. So no matter what frequency comes in through your antenna, it combines with your local oscillator frequency up here at the mixer so that your output is those four things I said, and you're only looking for the 455. Block the other ones. So at the 455, now the 455 is getting through and your radio is doing all its work. So again, no matter what, so if you, look, if you tune into 1200, then this would be uh, 1655. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So that the difference, the difference between 1200 and 1655 is 455. So these two track, these capacitors here, as you can see, there's a little, uh, it shows how they're like joined together here. I can't see if they can, if you can pick that up. More than like, yeah, they're all, all C6 and C7, means they're the same caps. That's this one, this one, and down here, this one. So again, like I said, once you get that set up, so what you're doing when you're doing the alignment is you're making sure, so you've already, we talked about the 455. We've aligned the radio for 455, so that's, going to block everything except 455. We're good there. So how do we get the 455 through the alignment? We align this to work best with the antenna and your, your dial, whatever your dial is pointed to. This kind of is, a, is it, it does pretty much the same thing. It's, it's a, it hones in a little bit better. Uh, it's just a second stage. Your local oscillator, we set that because you can imagine if that wasn't set to be 455, since we've already set the uh, 455 to come through here, if your difference ended up being 555, nothing would go through. So since we're listening on the other end, you sit down here and you keep turning this until you keep turning these adjustable capacitors until you start to hear the tone. Then you go, oh, okay, now I must be right at 455. So if you actually put a frequency counter up there, you would see that you're 455 above or below it. I don't know if that confused matters or not, but that's what you're aligning. You're actually aligning these little doodads here. You have a uh, sometimes a coil, sometimes a capacitor, sometimes both. Coil, capacitor, sometimes both. Depends uh, down on this band, there's just a capacitor. Same thing with that band. So uh, you follow the specs, but that, that's what you're aligning for. You're aligning basically to bring your frequency in and make sure that it's lined up and that the pointer works where it's pointing to, it's, it's picking up that channel. And your local oscillator is on frequency, so when it combines with the input frequency, those two combine, they do their little magic here. 
and push a 455 out here. So again, that's it. I hope that cleared things up a little bit. At least you know what we were aligning anyhow. Uh, sometimes this kind of stuff just takes a little bit of time to sink in or you have to think about it and go, oh, okay, I understand. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you.